Hello and welcome to Thursdays with Annette. I'm so glad you've joined me this week because we've got a decadent cake that we're going to be making and I think you're going to love it. It's hummingbird cake out of book three. But before we get into the whole thing, I'm super excited about this recipe. Um, I just want to mention the winners from last week's show from the teriyaki beef who all won a personally signed copy of book six and they're very excited. Maureen Wood, congratulations. Debbie Peckham and the fabulous Michelle Davis. They are the winners. And of course, there's always something to win on the show. But before we get into it, can I just say that I'm super excited because my next six week winter weight loss challenge starts in 11 days. I know it's getting close. So if you've been struggling with your weight, you know, especially over the pandemic time, it's been hard for us. Look, you know, now is the perfect time to kick your weight loss efforts up get in the next gear and get on the right track. Now, with this plan, you get daily menu plans to follow, plus my support, fabulous community of like-minded people on um, the uh, closed Facebook page where, you know what, they're walking the same journey as you, so you never feel alone. Plus, oh my gosh, so much more. Please check it out because it's a fabulous challenge. It's go to simplytogood.com.au forward slash membership. Look, I cannot wait to get started and I look forward to helping you be the healthy, fabulous you. And one of the ways you can continue being healthy and fabulous is not being deprived of the food you love. So that's why we're doing Hummingbird Cake out of book three today. So this is the book we're working out of and that is today's recipe. Can I just say that if you've got the old version, you'll be looking going, okay, this all looks a bit different because this is the old version where we updated a couple of years ago. And here's the recipe. So you can see that, you know, the photo is a little bit fizzier in the new books, but sometimes a recipe has changed a little bit and you will see that. So take note as I go along that it's slightly different in the new updated version than in the older one because I always like to make them as best as they can be and that's what I've done with this one. All right, so let's look at the ingredients we need. So we need some cooking spray, of course. <clears throat> we also need crushed pineapple. Now, the one you want is in, um, in the natural juice, not syrup, because the syrup pineapple, crushed pineapple, is added sugar. We don't need it. This is the healthy person's choice in the juice. We want uh, half a cup of skim milk, we want two egg whites. Of course we need some bananas because this is what's so fabulous about this uh, hummingbird cake. It's got the flavours from banana as well as pineapple. I know, it's fabulous. So we need about two or three bananas because we're going to mash it up and get three quarters of a cup. I've also got some walnuts to chop up that goes in it. Bicarb soda to help lift it up a little bit so it's not um, gluggy in your mouth. We're going to use mixed spice in this cake and it really does give it some extra flavour. We only use a quarter of a cup of white sugar in this and this is what I try and do. You know, like people say, oh no, artificial sweet. And I go, no, do not darken my doorway. I cannot stand stevia. But look, a quarter of a cup of sugar, this says 14. It's not a lot of sugar. Where does the sweetness come? From the pineapple and the banana. I know, I'm so clever. We're also going to melt, and I might put that in in a second, is the flora light margarine. We need two tablespoons or 30 grams if you want to weigh it. We have two cups of self-raising flour, and then the icing that goes on the top is half a cup of icing, sugar, and a teaspoon of flora light. Plus, you'll use a little bit of the pineapple juice um, that we drain off to go in to give it the, the um, spreadable consistency we want. So let's get started. Okay, so in the microwave, I always turn mine down a little bit so it doesn't splatter crazy all over the place. And I'm gonna do that for 20 seconds and I can forget about that for now. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I think I'll chop my walnuts. So let's do this. Now we've got 25 grams or you can measure it uh, as a quarter of a cup. Now we want it chopped. And with this recipe, a lot of times they use pecans. Um, they use walnuts or pecans, but in this recipe I decided to do walnuts. And um, so if you're thinking, oh, not a fan of walnuts, there you go, there's a swap for you. Change it to 25 grams or a quarter of a cup 
of whatever nut you like. Um, but pecans do go well in it, but I do love walnuts in this. So lots of banging flavours in this cake. It's also, you know, you can freeze it. And I've made it ahead, and, um, but without the icing. I always think it's better to do a cake if you want to have a couple of extra cakes in the freezer for surprise visitors. Then what you can do is just make them and then put the icing on when you've defrosted it. I just think that works better. I try to give you as many tips as I can. So I'm just putting all those walnut chopped bits in there. And we don't need our chopping board anymore. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the, um, the pineapple. Oh, what am I doing with that big knife? Let me get it. So I just want to flick that up. And we drain it because we want to get that juice off because it'll otherwise it'll be too wet. Now I've got, look, you know what? I recycle. This is an old, old um, strainer from way back. Pour it all in. Look, you really just, there's not, you don't use all of it. It's not a lot left, but it is going to be three quarters of a cup. And how you can get that juice out is by what I'm doing now is just move it around. But you need to have it in a, a, um, a draining bowl that won't have it sitting in the juice. So there we go. That's the pineapple. And remember to keep some of that juice because we need it for what? That's right, the icing. Okay, so let's do our bananas. Now you need about two or three. It really depends on the size. I mean, if you've got really little ones, you might need even four. But I'm gonna do, these aren't too bad size. I might do two and a half bananas actually, just to make sure I've got enough for you. And what you wanna look for when you're doing bananas like this sort of recipe is exactly this. All that brown stuff on the side means that this is a ripe banana. And what's great about that is it'll be super sweet. You don't wanna use green bananas in cakes like this because it would plus be very hard to mash, but you want that natural sweetness coming out of the bananas. And um, you just gotta mash them up. And we want three quarters of a cup, remember that, three quarters of a cup in the end. Now someone actually asked me one time, I can't eat bananas, what do you suggest as an alternate? And I've never done it, so I'm, I'm only guessing here, but I do love to give you options on the show. I would think that you could do stewed apple. You know, drain it well though, you don't want it really wet, and mash it up, or even pear. So if anyone is allergic to bananas and they want to try the hummingbird cake and you do that, can you let me know? I'd be really interested. So let's look, that's all lovely and mashed. And the banana um, will definitely give it um, moisture as well. All right, let me put that in the sink. I like to set myself up for success. And what I've done is I've done my walnuts, I've done my banana, I've got my pineapple ready to go. So what's next? It's let's get cooking. All right. So preheat in the oven to 180 degrees fan forced and it's ready to go. So hello, if you've just joined me, I'm in the kitchen, yes, that's where I am every Thursday, and I'm making hummingbird cake out of book three. I know. All right, so we're gonna do two egg whites, and straight away I've saved you know, six, gram of flat, six grams of fat per yolk that I don't use. It's not needed in the recipe, so I'm happy to, to miss that out. And it's the saturated fats as well, so we don't need that. Oh, I've got a little bit of shell in there. Hold on one moment, please. I've got to get my shell out. Oh, come here. There we go. All right, so we now beat that with a quarter cup of ice, uh, white sugar. All right, so here we go. Gonna beat that for a minute. And so this is how you always pretty well start with most of my cakes and muffins. And we'll talk about that as we go along. Because I do it my way. And if you've got my cookbooks and you've been doing them, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. 
Okay. I'm going to get my margarine out of the microwave while I remember. It's all ready to go. So we can do that in a mini. All right, so I'm going to now put the, the bicarb into the banana. And that will help lighten the recipe. And it blends in with the banana. You don't even know it's there. All right, and in we go. Oh, I didn't measure it. Oh, ah, Annette. Okay, I better take some of that out. Silly me. I'm just rushing here. It'll be fine. Maybe just, there we go. All right, so, all right, Annette, just calm down. Slow down. Let's focus. <laughs> oh, you know me, I get a bit busy and excited. Does that make you feel good that I even make mistakes in the kitchen? I only did that to make you feel good. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Now we put in the milk goes in to the melted mud. That way it'll cool it down a little bit as well so it doesn't um, affect the cake or the raw mix. In we go. Perfect. This is where I'm going to get my wooden spoon in and just give that a mix up. Now you can't mess this cake up at this point, apart from putting too much banana in like I did. But if you follow the recipe, that would be a good idea. But at this point, this is where you, you don't make a mistake normally. I'll tell you when you can sort of kind of bugger it up. So, quarter cup walnuts in. Yep. Now let's do the mixed spice. We want a teaspoon. Level it out. In it goes. Oh my gosh, did you watch me on Tuesday? Because I do my Tuesday with Annette home ec class. And in last um, month, uh, Tuesdays, I did garlic prawns. So you need to, if you haven't seen that one, you need to watch it because it's fantastic. You can go back down. Now, I'm going to measure the pineapple, all right? So, hello, Annette. I've calmed down a bit. We want three quarters of a cup. So push it down so you're getting the right measurement. That's perfect. In it goes. All right, so let's push, let's move them over here. And I need this, I, actually I need the juice, so I'm going to take that out and put the juice over here. All right, now this is where you can just play with it as much as you like. But what you need to focus on to make sure you get fabulous and gorgeous is you don't overbeat when you put the flour in. So at this point, as I said, you can't mess it up. Well, says Annette. <laughs> now what we do is we're going to sift the two cups of self-raising flour in. Do it in one go. Don't um, See, in the olden days, you'd put a little bit in, you'd mix it in and then whatever. Oh no, don't do it that way, not the Annette way, people. Chuck the whole lot in, because I don't want you to be mixing it too much. Because without all the butter and oil that people put in traditional cakes, the gluten can get bruised. And so this is where you just gotta be a little bit delicate. Let's just fold that in gently. You don't beat it, don't beat it. And you don't use your electric beater, that's for sure. Get your patiently little folding over, mix it in. Oh my God, this smells so good. And we're just mixing that flour in. And once all that flour has dissolved into the mix, then you stop, okay? Don't cream it up because this is how it will be the best hummingbird cake ever. All right, so see how it's stopped? And we're now going to put it, get the cooking spray. Now, I like to spray my, my pan over the sink so I don't get a mess. But let me just give you a little tip here. It says it's a 19 centimetre cake tin. And if you think, I don't know what my cake tins are, get your ruler out, go along the base to the zero along, and it'll tell you how much it is. You don't measure from the top, you measure from the base. And this is 19 and a half centimetres. Boom. All right, so let's get the cooking spray on. easy is this cake to do? I know. 
It's fantastic. But the good news is the traditional version, which actually originated from Jamaica. I mean, who knew? It is just so decadent, uh, so high in calories and, uh, and fat that I had to give you a guilt-free version, 100%, because this is a delightful cake. I don't want... Um, look, oh, Ingrid's asked, hello Ingrid, what sort of spray do I use? Well, I use pretty well the canola one, but also, um, you know, if you've got really good um, non-stick pans, you really should maybe use the oat bread, the rice bran, rice bran um, spray, because it's got no additives in it. Okay, so now let's spread this out and we're going to bake this. But getting back to the Jamaican original recipe, uh, how they normally do it, so we want to spread this out, how they normally do it is they, like it's in layers. And in between these layers is, you know, high calorie cream cheese. So high fat, high calorie. And then in the recipe, they put like a bucket load of nuts, two cups of sugar, for example. And so to me, this is a much better alternate. And, you know, probably it's about 35 grams of fat. And I did check 700 calories for a slice of traditional hummingbird cake. Oh my gosh, no thank you. My way, yes, hello, only 2.5 grams of fat and a guilt-free 140 calories. Okay, so I'm, notice I'm moving it out of the center a bit. And the reason is so that it doesn't get this big high dome. So there's our cake ready to go in the oven, 180 degrees fan force. Now it will be in for 35 minutes. I would say start with 35, and if you need another five minutes, just check it. But the way you check, of course, is touch the top, and if it feels firm, then you're good to go. All right, so now I'm going to just clean up my kitchen here, and we're going to make the icing. I do have already prepared. Here we go. I've got one cake already done, which I did this morning. I know it's bubbles, but let's make the icing and then we'll spread and enjoy. So how do we do the icing? You start with half a cup of icing sugar. Please always sift your icing sugar because there's nothing worse than lumps in your icing because it can be really hard to get those lumps out. And um, I'm just going to push that through. Perfect. We're going to put in the margarine, which is a teaspoon, just to give it a little bit of texture. And this is where we add in the pineapple juice. And you probably really, I'd go spoon by spoon with it because it's not a lot of icing. So I'm going to do a teaspoon and just get it mixing. Okay, let's put in another teaspoon. And you'll get that little bit of sweetness coming off the pineapple juice that really blends in well with this cake. Now, it is suitable to be frozen, as I said. You can freeze it with the icing on it as well, but I prefer, if I can, to do it without the icing if you're going to freeze it. And work that in. Okay, let's do a little bit more. You've just got to tread carefully with icing because it all seems very dry and then suddenly you go, oh no, it's too wet. Look at that, that's perfect. And you only want a little bit, okay, because we're all about healthy, you know, looking after our hips as well as our heart and we don't want, oh, you know, super high calories. So there's our icing. And I'm just going to spread that. A light, it's a light coating that you put over it. It's actually very lovely, even without the icing, if you really wanted to. But, you know, it's normally traditionally got that cream cheese on the top. But we weren't going to go there, were we? Remember, 700 calories. My goodness. All right, now I need a spoon. Here, I'm going to spread it with my little butter knife. Here we go. It's a beautiful cake. 
really a special one for any morning or afternoon teas you might have coming up. Just, as I said, a light coating of the icing. Oh, hello. You could sprinkle a little bit of um, the uh, spice on the top if you wanted to make it a bit prettier. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck a couple of walnuts on because I like to add a little bit of fizzy to it. All right, so there is our hummingbird cake book three. I mean, who knew weight loss could be so deliciously healthy? You're welcome. 2.5 grams fat and a guilt for 140 calories. Now, if you'd like to win book three, I mean, who wouldn't? Um, well, you know what you've got to do on Thursdays with Annette? It's like, share, and in the comments, it's hashtag simply too good. That's right, simply number two good, S-Y-M. And I will pick three fantastic people to go in to win a personally signed copy of book three. Now, Let's talk about next week because I'm super busy and excited about it. Um, so Tuesdays with Annette, I'm doing a good old family favourite classic that my kids loved and I'm sure yours will as well. It's pikelets from book five. Super easy recipe but fun to eat. Now so pikelets on Tuesday and next Thursday we're doing, I'm going to do a recipe from book, um, book five. Three, book three, we're going back to book three again, and it's the chicken and spinach lasagna. Now, well, who doesn't love a lasagna? And I'm gonna show you a really unusual way to do a lasagna using the chicken and spinach. So you need to be here next Thursday. So if you would like to check out, don't forget to go to simplytogood.com.au forward slash membership. And you can join me up for my new program starting soon. It's amazing, um, but for now, it's all about eating cake. Thanks for joining me and don't forget simplytogood.com.au for any more tips or recipes and I'll catch you on Tuesday's Home Ec with Annette. Bye now.